GT Summary is a great package for creating various summaries of your data. And today we're going to talk about creating cross tables using GT Summary. So these are the packages which we would use. So the main package is GT Summary. And we would create some sample data. So the sample data is coming from the ggplot2 package. And this is the diamonds data set. So if I'm going to create another data frame called DF from the diamonds data set. You can see that it has about 53,000 records. And these are the, the columns or the data fields in that. And let's make use of, first of all, let's view the data on the screen using GT. So th this is how the data is going to look like. So let's see what options we have in GT summary package to create our cross tables. So cross tables are nothing but two-way tables consisting of columns and rows, and you have two variables which you want to analyze. So I can use table summary command to do that. I'm using cut and the color variables. So this is cut, the frequency of the cut, and then the frequency of the color, but that's not a cross table. So to make it cross table, we will have to use another command. So table summary, I'm going to put by equals color. And then suddenly you will see that you have a two by two table, you have cut on one axis and the color on the other. So you can simply change it by changing the by equals cut. Now the orientation of that table is changed now. Now let's talk about the table underscore cross command. And that's what we wanted to show you in this demo. So using the same data set, instead of giving the table summary command, I can give a command table underscore cross. So I need to select two variables, cut and color in this case. And you would see that we have a similar output. So you can see that one of the output is actually showing the percentage also, but we can always have that in table cross as well. Now let's see another way of doing the same thing. So instead of using the select command, which I used here, and I selected two variables, cut and color, I can simply have the syntax like this. So DF is our original data frame. And I'm saying row should be color and the column should be cut. And that is within the table cross command. So it'll produce exactly the same result. And I can simply swap the cut and the color. And you would see that I've made row as cut and column as color. You would see the orientation of that will change. So exactly the same thing which we saw in table summary as well so far. Now we would like to give some descriptive labels instead of calling them as cut and color. I want to call it as cut of diamond and diamond color. And I'm going to use the labeled package and you can set the variables. So the first variable cut is going to be called as cut of diamond and the color of would be called as diamond color. So it's not the renaming, it's just labeling the same column as different. So there's a difference in that. So I'm still going to refer them to as cut and color, but the output is going to show cut of diamond and diamond color. You can see that the titles have changed, but the original names of the columns remain the same. So there's a that's the, the fundamental difference. Instead of renaming the columns, we have simply given them a descriptive labels. Now let's start enhancing the output a bit further. So we can give some more commands in there. Let's try to bring the percentage. We saw that in table summary, we had the percentage. Why don't we bring it here as well? So I'm saying percent equals column. So the percent is going to be column based. You can see that there is percentages for each and every value and the column is actually totaling to 100%. Now, if I went and changed percent equals row, then you would see that now the row is going to total to 100%. This is a very nice feature in table cross that it gives you the, the totals by the column or by the rows, which are called the margins. And you can be very clear about it, whether it's a row wise percentage or the column wise percentage. So it makes it quite clear for your viewers of your reports. Of course, you can use more customization if you don't want the margins to be appearing on both the sides, that is columns as well as the rows, you can simply tell it to just do it on the row. So this is how it will look like. And if I change that margin to column, and then it will simply do a total on a vertical direction. Now the question would be, what if we wanted it on both the sides? By default, it is going to appear on both the sides. 
But if you happen to try changing it to this, saying, okay, I want to give it as column as row. I want to give it as rows as well as columns. Let's see what happens. It does it. So you can specify like this also, but you can simply remove this line completely because that's the default. Okay, going further, I would like to change the word total. I don't want the words total. I want to change it to something different. So I'm saying margin underscore text equals total numbers instead of just the total which is appearing by default. So if I run it, you would see that instead of total, we have total numbers on the row as well as the column margins. Next question which comes to mind is, can we actually change the row and the column margin text like total numbers in one case and frequency in the other? Do you think it's going to work? No, we get an error. It only wants one margin text which will appear on both the sides so we, can, we can't do that. So I'm going to remove it and live with this total numbers only. Sometimes in your data you have missing values. So how do we treat those? We can actually tell the table cross saying missing equals always that it always will show you a missing column. Whether it's no missing values found, it will still show it to you as zero. So th that's quite good. You can always change the options and you can also change the missing text also. So instead of saying unknown, I want to call it as missing values which works great. If you looked at the help for table cross, you would see that there are a number of options available. For example, missing, you can say if any, always or no. So let's make some more changes to our final output. And we would like to bold the labels. So the labels which are appearing at the top. So if I run it now, you would see that the labels have become bold. But what about those fair, good, very good, etc.? So these are the levels. You can also change those levels for those factor. And now these are also going to become bold. Okay, now it's time to add a p value. So I'm going to say add underscore p, which is going to create a p value by comparing the values across the groups. So we have a p-value column. Can you see something? I haven't got any output. It's just blank. Before we try to investigate it further, do you no notice that p-value is not shown as bold? So I'll have to move this add underscore p before I do the bold labels and bold levels. So if I did it like this, then you will notice that the p-value become bold, but it's still empty. So the problem is still not fixed and we have a lot of errors being shown there. Do you think if we just swap the rows and columns, so instead of row as color, if I call it cut and color, would it work? It's not going to work. So the problem lies in the missing values. See how it is shown as always? The moment we make it to no, it's going to calculate the p-values. And the reason is that before calculating the p-values, we want to remove all the missing values from there. So this is the p-value. And there's another way of showing the p-value. Instead of showing that as a separate column, what if you just put that below in, in, the, in the kind of the notes down there? So I said source underscore notes equal true, and you would see that the p-value would go instead of the column, it's just being shown there as, which is much better. Instead of wasting the a special column, you can actually just put it up there. Now, is there any other equivalent? There are lots of alternatives for creating cross tables, but I prefer to use and stick to one or two because when you're creating presentation ready reports, you just don't want to have different outputs. So just to show you an example, I'm going to use another package called cross table package. So library cross table, and we can do something similar. So I said cross table and then provide your data frame and what do you want on the column and what do you want on the rows? So cut, comma, color and it'll actually produce the results. You can see the result is being shown in the console. Obviously, we don't like it because we want to see it as a report. And we can actually make it as a flex table. And if we do that, you would see that it's appearing on your right-hand side. 
Of course, you can customize them further, which we are not going to do in this video. But let's show you the compact equals true option. What it does is it actually it removes one extra column which appeared on the left hand side. So the tables look nice, but can we consume them in our report? For example, a Word report. I'm going to use the Office Down package, which provides a nice RMD output, specifically the Word documents or PowerPoint. So once we install it, we would have few new options available. So I said new R Markdown, and you would see that we have now advanced Word document, which we want to use. So this is going to give us a template. And without going into further details, we have a special video for that already. You can watch that. I'm just going to make use of our existing code which we wrote and then simply run it. So in this case, I used a compact theme which came from GT summary package. And if I run it, you would see that we have a nice output of the, of the chart or the table itself. We can also make use of the flex table conversion as well in this case. So if I take this chunk and just duplicate it, copy it again, and I'll just call the first one as compact theme. This is coming from the GT summary. But in this case, I can convert this into a flex table object also and make use of the flex table formatting if I want it. So table cross, I'll, I'll simply pass this or pipe it out to as flex table command from the GT summary package. And how do we know that this is different from the first? So the first one we made use of the GT summary theme, but in this case, we can make use of the flex table theme, which I'll show you in a second. So if I run it, you would see that we have a similar output, but this time it's a flex. Well, how do we believe it's a flex table object? It looks similar, but in this case, now we can use the flex table formatting or the flex table theme. So in this case, I'm going to use the theme zebra, which gives us the nice alternating shades of the in the table. So you can see that the first table was formatted using the GT summary compact theme, and the second table is formatted by the theme zebra from the flex table, and that proves that this is a flex table output. So you can make use of different kind of outputs and customize them further. I hope you found this information useful and practical. Thank you very much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.